Now that Sipi Livni has defeated Transportation Minister Shaul Mofaz for leadership of the Kadima Party, the Foreign Minister is seemingly in line to become Prime Minister, but it may not be so simple. Here to provide analysis is Yoni Kempinski. Shalom Yoni. Shalom Aaron. So Livni now heads Kadima and the Foreign Minister has made it clear she wants to be Prime Minister. What about the current Prime Minister, Ehud Olmert? Well, Aaron, while there uh, had been speculation that Olmert was going to uh, attempt to delay his time in power, it now seems that uh, won't be happening. During uh, the cabinet meeting this morning, Prime Minister Ehud Olmert had a dramatic announcement which made his future as head of government very clear. <laughs> I will announce today during the cabinet meeting on my decision to resign as Prime Minister. I must say it is not an easy decision and not a simple decision. It was not taken lightly and without personal feelings. I think I am taking the correct path in a responsible and decent way, as I promised the Israeli public from the first moment. I believe the process the Israeli government made with me as Prime Minister, those that you can speak about and those that you cannot, got us to the right place in the history of the government of Israel, and it will be written in our favor and those that participated with me. Now, Omert had been in power only 33 months, and while there were a turbulent time, ironically enough, this is actually longer than most governments hold on to power, though still well below the full term in office. Uh, one thing that has to be remembered, this is not the end of El Omert. He will be continuing to serve as head of uh, a caretaker government until an alternative government is formed, or general elections. Now, in Israeli politics, and especially with El Dorma, the future is very hard to predict. Keep in mind, El Dorma had not been viewed as a uh, prime ministerial candidate, really, until he joined with Ariel Sharon in the early days of Kadima. Before that, Omer had been 39th on the Likud Knesset list. So El Dorma may still have a political future ahead of him. So practically speaking, Omer needs to give a letter of resignation to President Shimon Peres. After the letter is delivered, whoever is judged most capable of forming a government would have 42 days to put a coalition together. If no government can be formed, new elections are called for three months later. Now, while this doesn't sound like such a long time, it could mean another five months with El Domert as prime minister, although today, as we said, he declared that he is resigning. Now, Yoni, we're not putting together a government. Can Livni pull it off before general elections? Well, the answer to this, like in many things Israeli politics, is maybe. While El Dormit has a relatively stable coalition now, a certain parties such as Shas and the pensioners have been making noises about a various, uh, various issues. So with the new government being formed, the parties are likely to demand greater concessions, uh, particularly in the area of child support uh, payments and services for the elderly. Uh, the problem with this is Livni's own party, Kadima, is strongly opposed to these issues. But Aaron Livni could bring in merits, but then she would have an extremely weak coalition with exactly enough mandates to rule, as well as opposition from within Kadima itself, with the threat of MK defections always hanging over any party sitting in the Knesset. Now, the nationalist parties, which are the main bloc of opposition, as well as Agudat Israel, uh, will almost certainly not join with Livni for ideological reasons. This leaves the Arab parties, but joining with them is a Politically, this is impossible. No prime minister who ever even suggested such a coalition would be sitting for long. Um, what's even worse for Livni is meetings between Likud and Labor about forming a government which wouldn't include Kadima. You know, you're telling us that Labor and Likud might join together. Is this a real possibility? Well, not only is it a possibility, the process may have already begun. Uh, on Saturday night, Likud chairman Benjamin Netanyahu met Labor chairman Ehud Barak at the Defense Ministry. Of course, the meeting was not open to the public, but Barack has already publicly stated he is interested in an emergency national unity government made up of the left and right, Likud and Labor. No Kadima here. One of the reasons uh, this Likud Labor government may be possible is the Kadima party itself. Kadima has members who were from every party across the political spectrum. So the party is viewed as a refuge for those who didn't believe too strongly in their previous party's ideology. 
Giving the impression of opportunists and rejecting opportunism for ideology might strengthen the public's faith in the old line ideological parties. A uh, second reason pushing Barack is the polls. As things stand now, labor will severely be weakened following any election results. So naturally, the defense minister wants to delay elections while showing himself as a real leader who does what's best for the country, even if it risks his chances of staying in the coalition. If Netanyahu will agree and attempt to form the government is still unknown since he is looking very strong following elections, but the chance to be prime minister without new elections may persuade the opposition leader. Now, could you tell us what kind of response has come out of the Livni camp? I'm sure the foreign minister can't be pleased with this development. Yeah, well, Livni's camp immediately began attacking the Barack Netanyahu meeting, declaring it was chauvinism and fear of a woman prime minister, which was drawing the one-time rivals together. Uh, but Labour MK Shelley Khimovic quickly responded to take feminism out of the equation, uh, arguing this meeting and whichever government was formed had to be for the good of the country. Yoni, thank you very much.